What is up you guys, Glitches here and welcome back to the channel. Today I am bringing you what is my best attempt at creating a viable all melee and physical damaged uh, warrior build. Uh, it was much, much more difficult as I'm sure you could imagine um, than making a wizard build. Um, there's a lot of things that they're gonna need to fix before the full game comes out. They're just very underwhelming right now. Um, but with this build, um, I think we have something that is still pretty viable in the given circumstances. Um, it does about as much damage and has about as much resistance as you can possibly get. And I tried everything, trust me. Um, and I'm gonna go over a lot of the interesting things that I actually found that I didn't even know um, through doing my testing um, that I learned along the way. So without any further ado, let's jump into it because it's gonna take a few minutes. Um, so right out the gate, let's go over equipment. Best in slot helmet, bar none. There is no other explanation for this, in my opinion, is the soldier helmet. This will give us plus 15% melee critical strike chance and plus 12% critical strike damage. Both very good and very important perks for melee builds. They do have the paladin helmet, gives uh, only the melee critical strike chance, no critical strike damage, and a little bit more resistance, but... I actually learned some very interesting things about how physical resistance and armor work in this game, which is what made me come to the conclusion why this is the best. And uh, since we're on the topic, maybe I'll give you guys some little uh, tips on what I learned. So basically, um, from my uh, testing, what I found out was physical resistance and armor are two totally separate uh, uh, instances in this game. And armor is, in fact, capped. The maximum amount of damage mitigation that you can get from your physical resistance and armor is capped um, once you get to a certain point. So it doesn't matter how much physical resistance or armor or what level your armor is, once you hit that cap, you're not going to be taking any more or less damage. Um, so given that information, you can uh, vary your build a little bit more than people would have thought. Um, and I'll go over that in a minute. But just a quick example, say you had an enemy that did 500 damage to you and you had 300 armor. That would just be like a flat reduction where it would reduce that damage down to say 200. It would just remove that 300 and so on and so forth. Physical resistance is more of like a multiplier where it does a certain amount of points, but that's also up to a cap. Now, say you had an enemy do 500 damage to you, but you had a million armor. You're still going to take like 150 damage, because once you hit a certain cap, it's not gonna mitigate anymore. You're still gonna take that same amount of damage. And the cap that I came to find out was about 60 to 65% this is the max, basically physical resistance and armor that you can mitigate um, in this game right now. Um, so no matter how much armor perks you get, and when it comes to like some of the alternate chest plates I'll go over in a minute, don't necessarily go with the highest physical resistance when you're doing a warrior because it's basically going to be a zero return for your investment um, once you hit that cap. Um, so best in slot for soldier helmet for that reason, mainly because of just the perks that you're using. They're great for melee builds is the soldier helmet. Moving on to the chest plate, the radiant paladin chest plate, in my opinion, is best in slot. Gives you plus 240 health and plus 24 stamina. The reason why it's best in slot is because I tested it with the second best, in my opinion, uh, option um, that uh, is in the game right now, which is the Warden chest plate. A little bit less physical resistance, but people pick this because it gives you plus 24 bonus physical armor points. So you're like, hey, that's a big jump in armor that's going to reduce more damage. The funny thing is, it doesn't. I equipped the Warden chest plate. I equipped the Paladin chest plate, let the highest damaging enemies in the game sit there and beat on me from 10, 20 minutes straight to make sure I got the numbers right. And they did the exact same amount of damage regardless of the additional armor. And that is because all the other armor that we're using in our set are also high armor, high physical resistance pieces, and we've already hit that cap. So once you hit that cap, the next best thing that you want to invest in is your health. And the Warden Chestplate only gives you 120, whereas the Paladin Chestplate gives us 240. So I would always go, once you hit that cap, with additional health over additional armor, because you're not going to be getting any bonuses out of it. Uh, moving on, um, back to the next piece uh, for the gloves. Best in-slot gloves, in my opinion, for right now, and I say that for a reason, is the Soldier Gloves. 
This will give us plus 3% damage against melee foes, which in close range combat is pretty much everything with the exception of flyers or magic users. Um, and even some of them are physical. Um, and then plus 12% one-handed melee damage. This build, as you'll see when we get to the skill tree, covers best of both worlds for any given scenario for both one-handed weapons and shield and two-handed weapons. Primarily, you're going to be using your two-handed weapon for everything up to the end game uh, uh, when it comes to major enemies and single target enemies. If you're in a big group, you still can use your hammer, but if you need lifesteal in a pinch, the specific sword I'm going to go over is really great for that, so I wanted to be able to use both if needed. But the next perk is 12% to one-handed melee damage, and this is broken right now. It also gives you 12% for two-handed weapons as well. So right now, it is best in slot for the fact that it's broken. If they fix this ever and change it to where it only works with one-handed weapons and we don't eventually get a specific pair of warrior gloves that are good for two-handed weapons, the next best in slot option for gloves that I would recommend is actually the Deerstalker gloves from the Hunter uh, tree. This will give you plus 6% range damage, which will be a nice little bonus to our bow that we're gonna be using for flying enemies, but it also has a flat 12% damage multiplier for any weapon in the game. So the reason that in that particular instance that it would be second best compared to the, um, the other ones is this would give you a 12% uh, total bonus, Whereas the um, soldier gloves, because pretty much everything will be melee, is going to be 15% damage bonus um, for melee weapons. So you're getting 2% extra bonus. It's going to be a slight increase in damage when you have these equipped. But like I said, if these get fixed and it's only good for one-handed, definitely use um, the Deerstalker gloves. Now, here's the other thing that was interesting, and I've already put a bug report in for this. The Deerstalker gloves are also broken. The 12% damage multiplier is not working right now. So not only do they have to fix the the um, uh, soldier gloves, but in order to have a good secondary replacement is they're also going to have to fix the Deerstalker gloves. The 12% damage multiplier is not working. I went up against all the heaviest hitting enemies in the game and even single target bosses. I went with literally unarmed, no gloves, waited to get hit, or not waited to get hit, but did damage. And the damage that I did was exactly the same as if I was unarmed with no gloves and if I had this deer stalker gloves on, which means that the damage multiplier is not working properly right now. But in theory, much with the broken uh, steel gloves, if they fix that, this would be the next best option. Moving on for the pants. These are the best in slot flat out there is no other replacement in my opinion the radiant paladin trousers this gives us plus two health regeneration and plus 90 health we're already at our armor cap just with these other three pieces so the more health that you can get the better and these give you the biggest health and health regen bonus of any other chest or leg piece and then last but not least the interesting one that i think is going to be a uh, neat for a lot of people that they wouldn't expect is actually the hawk boots now, a lot of people would want to put on the Radiant Paladin boots because it has eight more physical resistance as well as some health regen. But with the lifesteal that we're going to be doing from perks in our tree, um, the health regen isn't actually as important as our stamina regen. One of the biggest downsides in melee combat is that your big heavy hitting attacks drain your stamina very fast. And if you run out of stamina in the middle of a fight, you're pretty much screwed because you're not going to be able to evade and escape and you're not going to be able to get your swings off easily and actually heavy hits from enemies can actually stun you just like you would stun them if you break their block they can break your block during parries when you run out of stamina and then you get stunned so having stamina is big and the hawk boots give you a plus two stamina regeneration and a negative 700 stamina regeneration delay and so i did the tests and the reason why i picked these because i also want to be able to deflect as much damage as possible but back to what I was saying about hitting a cap for your armor, because of the other armor we're putting on, regardless of whether I had the Radiant Paladin boots on or the Hawk boots, the highest level enemies in the game were still doing the exact same amount of damage to me. So might as well go with something that's going to actually benefit you than something that's not. So in this particular instance, we're going to be taking the same amount of damage anyway, so why not have infinite stamina, basically? And that 700 uh, point recharge delay is amazing the second you hit zero of your stamina it is less than a second that your stamina instantly starts refilling back up and the biggest heavy hitting attack at least with two-handed weapons that you're going to be using is the double jump or single jump rather um, downward strike attack 
that uses up a big chunk of stamina. And before, without good stamina regeneration, if you did that right at your last bit of stamina, you would run out and there's gonna be a hefty delay before you can swing again. With these, the regeneration gets boosted so much that you can actually spam that jump attack over and over and over again, and you'll never run out of base uh, stamina to do at least one attack at any given point uh, with your melee weapons. So very, very handy, um, unrecognized uh, pair of boots that are good for melee uh, builds that I don't think a lot of people are using right now, um, but I did the testing and they're awesome. You won't have any stamina issues um, when you're using these, um, at least when it comes to running out completely. Um, so moving on, that is the equipment for the rings. Uh, right now I have a one ring of endless life. This gives plus 3% life leech chance. It's not very high, not the best ring in my opinion um, but when you're using your one-handed weapon as you'll see the particular one we're using you do life steal like crazy and with the perks that we're taking you swing faster with one-handed weapons as well so there is a pretty high chance of this procking in the middle of combat especially if you're hitting multiple foes in a tight pack at once and when it does proc it's 100 percent of the damage that you do so it is a nice little health health boost that you get from that um, the other ring that i'm using is the ring of health that will give plus four health regeneration and another 50 base health on top of your normal health pool. I would, in theory, like to get a second, I unfortunately don't have one right now, a second, if possible, Ring of Health and test that out. I think, in theory, that it might be better than Ring of Endless Life, uh, running two Rings of Health. I just can't remember if this is like specifically tied to a quest or if you could just find this out in the world somewhere. If you can and know where you can find this like regularly, if it's possible, let me know, and I would like to do some testing with two of these instead of using the Ring of Endless Life. I think it'll be better, in my opinion. So that's the one thing you could potentially upgrade. Um, for the shield, Shield of Light has 90 parry power and 17 block. That's the highest shield uh, parry power and block in the game right now, so use it. Um, for ranged weapons, best in slot, in my opinion, bow that we're going to be using is the Ignited Bow. Has 15 damage worth of uh, magic, damage per uh, magic damage perks, as well as Head Seeker, Recharge, and then the big thing is a 0.6 second draw speed. That is the fastest draw speed of any of the bows. And because we just want to take the flyers down as fast as we can, having that faster draw speed does come in handy in a pinch. In uh, the second best in slot scenario, um, if you don't mind or don't have that particular bow, is you can use the Wolf's Snarl Longbow. This has a one second uh, draw speed, so it does take a little bit longer, and the perks aren't as good, but it does have 35 base power instead of 25, so you're going to be shooting slower, but you will hit a little bit harder. Um, so that is another potential good option that you can use. But again, we're really only going to be using our bow for flying enemies, and they don't have much armor as it is. So within three to four shots, you can usually take out any level 30 or lower enemy anyway. Um, and that is using the ammunition of copper arrows, which I would recommend. Um, you do technically have higher base damage on things like the iron arrows and steel arrows or whatever. But um, in my opinion, it's just not worth the farm time that you have to take to get feathers and everything else. That bottleneck of having to collect extra materials is really annoying. There's plenty of places where you can farm copper up in bulk very, very quickly. And that and some twigs is the only thing required to craft copper, copper arrows. So you can stack up on these very, very quickly and very efficiently. And uh, the damage difference that you're going to get between the two different types is negligible, especially against flying enemies. So uh, why waste the time farming when you can just go to one resource? So I would recommend going with copper arrows. That's uh, the easiest ones to craft. Uh, moving on to weapons. Best in slot weapon, in my opinion for the two-handed option is going to be the ignited hammer. Reason being, it is 100% blunt, so we don't have to worry about splitting our perks in the skill tree, but it also has as a legendary five plus 14 blunt damage perks, and you want flat damage more than any other perk in my opinion, um, because it'll be a lot more consistent. This is the only one that has full on damage and only one damage type, so that is best in slot. If you don't have this one, another more easily found uh, weapon that's two-handed that you can use is the Deep Root Axe. This is split between cutting and blunt, but it does have three options and then an increased 40% uh, to critical hit damage. We don't critical hit as often with two-handed weapons, but when it does, those crits will do a ton of damage. It's just not going to be as consistent, so that's why I put it uh, second to the Ignited Hammer, but still a very good option. For our one-handed weapons, when we're using our shield and when we're in mid to uh, 
uh, early game, end game uh, packs of enemies where you can kill them more easily and you maybe even want to do it just for some additional quick life leech. The best in slot weapon, in my opinion, is going to be the Sword of Radiance because this has five precise perks on it, which pretty much gives us a 25% uh, additional critical hit chance. So you're going to be critting like crazy, and that's going to combo with a perk in our tree that's going to heal us for 5% of our health every time that we critical hit. So you crit constantly, basically every other hit to almost back-to-back -back hits sometimes you're going to see will be considered a crit with this sword and your health will regen very very fast um second option that is pretty good but not as good as the sword of range in my opinion is the twin soul mace this is full blunt damage so again we don't have to worry about splitting our damage types ambush isn't bad when you wrap around behind an enemy but it does have one uh, blunt damage perk as well as uh, extra point in health regeneration and 5% life leech built in. So when you combo that with critical hits uh, spell in, or ability in the tree, you do get decent life leech from this mace as well. Um, so not a bad uh, option there. Moving on to consumables. This is going to be a very big thing with uh, physical damage melee builds. Unlike the wizard where you could stand 30 feet away and just mow everything down with the one click of a button, you do have to be a little bit more strategical and you may have to use a potion every now and then in a risky situation. And also keep track of your buffs more frequently. So uh, consumables and potions are gonna be much more important on the warrior. The best in slot, in my opinion, food items are going to be the open sandwich. This will give you plus four more strength and plus two constitution. That is going to be your grain product. We get three uh, food slots, by the way. Um, your meat slot is going to be meat wrap. This will give you one throwaway intelligence, but another five constitution, which is going to give you a ton more health there. And then last but not least, the third best in slot for your fruit slot that I would take is the fruit bowl. That gives you plus six health regeneration and plus three stamina recharge. Um, if you're like me, um, things like the ingredients for potions and some of the meats, um, I built my base right on the opposite hill across from the Pillars of Creation. And this entire plateau has aloe and a big copper mine over, uh, copper vein over here, sugar cane, a lot of the uh, materials you use for high-end recipes and things like the greater potions. So this is a great spot to build a base, in my opinion. Um, so I don't have to go far to get some of the key ones that I need. Um, but uh, for the other particular consumables, obviously, you're always going to want to try and keep as many stacks of the best uh, health regeneration items as you can. In this case, it's going to be the revitalizing health potion for plus 800 health instantly. Um, you can farm these and the clean bandages um, in the area right by where my legendary uh, item farm location is. The Sun Temple, just um, southwest of that area, has three chests that you can farm that have either uh, poison or iron arrows, uh, revitalized max level potions, has a lot of um, uh, shroud meteor and chain lightning spells for wizards, and a bunch of other consumables like um, the alchemical bases that you would need to make some of them potions. So I actually threw down an altar right outside the door of the rightmost temple where the first big chest is, and you can do that as a little mini farm for consumables if you don't want to go get all the materials manually. Ideally, however, obviously you want to set up a farm, it's way more efficient, and just go through and pick the individual ingredients that are commonly used in those potions and in those uh, food items and just grow them at your farm and get them in bulk. Um, so that is in the end game, the best way you're going to want to handle it. Um, but moving on as well, um, for, um, uh, the healing over time, obviously again, cleaning bandages be 6% healing per second. You can also craft these pretty easily at the, um, the leather worker there. Uh, then you also want to take flasks of the fell for, uh, 20 additional stamina. This is good if you, in a rare instance, die, um, and, uh, just need some extra stamina boost and you don't have your rested buff. Rested buff is also going to be really important, um, because that will help with stamina regen as well. Um, the other big one, um, that you're going to want to take is elixirs. This is the only potion, um, unlike the scroll that we get as well for magic users, that's going to boost our damage. That will give us a 30% extra damage multiplier for 30 minutes. So always have a couple of these around. And then I like to carry, uh, some whiffs, of, uh, whiffs. I cannot speak right now, Wisp of Light Potions as well to uh, light up the area in case it gets dark out. 
So these are the go-to options for your best in slot foods and potions. Some alternatives if you're lower level or don't have good farm setups is for constitution. You have grilled sand digger meat. This will give you plus four constitution on its own and it's much easier, much quicker to farm than having to build the entire open sandwich recipe. The next below that would be the grilled bird meat. That gives you plus three constitution. Moving on for strength, we have hazelnuts. That will give you plus three strength and roasted corn on the cob will give you a plus two strength. And then lastly, for your health regen, strawberries will give you plus three. The purple berries will give you plus two. Ideally, you'll have the fruit bowl, which is a combination of all of them. That gives you much more in both and it lasts longer, um, but that is a lower level option if you need to. So finally, most important thing is the skills. This took a very, very long time. Much, much harder than a wizard. But I think we've covered all of our bases, and I think it works pretty well given the circumstances. So I'm not going to go over a leveling variation. I'm going to just go through the ones you should take. By this point, if you're looking at an endgame build, you should have everything maxed out. You should have about 114 total points to spend. So here's what you should take, in my opinion. Grab the point in Constitution in the tank tree, by the way, followed by shiny plates for 10% more armor, then heavy plates for an additional 10% mitigation on that armor, followed by the point in Constitution, and then Tower and Warden. Tower will give you 10% less uh, physical damage suffered when three or more enemies are around, and Warden will give you 15% less magic damage suffered when three or more enemies are around, and we want as much resistance as possible, um, followed by the point in Strength, Strength and Constitution, and next, Earth Aura. This will give us a 10% damage reduction to you, and all of your uh, fellow party members within 10 meters. Uh, and this is a permanent buff. You don't have to kill something to activate it. It will just always be there as a flat 10% damage reduction. And then lastly, thick skin. You will gain one extra constitution, which will boost our health further for every two levels of flame. This is currently bugged. You're only getting a max of two points, even though your altar can get to level six. So once that gets fixed, I know tons of bug reports have already been put in for that. Uh, once that gets fixed, you will actually be at 18 constitution not 17, um, so it will get buffed and be a little bit better. Moving on, in the Warrior Tree, pick up the Constitution Point as well as the Warrior's Path, um, followed by the Point in Strength. Also pick up Brute, all melee blunt damage is increased by an additional 10%, um, followed by Hammer Time, give you an additional 20, so we're getting 30% additional damage there for uh, blunt weapons followed by um, the extra 30% with Slasher and Butcher for 30% additional slashing damage for when we're using our one-handed weapon. Then you want to take Veteran, which will give uh, a 10% increased critical hit chance on melee weapons, followed by Constitution and Strength. Then you want to pick up Swift Blades. This is going to be good for your one-handed weapon and shield. And then lastly, the Quick Point and Constitution. Next big, big perks you're going to want to take is Evasion Attack. Um, for a cool little ability where when you dodge out of combat, you can quickly jump back in and do a power hit to do more damage. And then lastly, battle heal. This is key to our survivability. Um, it's the only perk for health regen that we're going to have in the game um, that isn't built into our weapons. And what this does is anytime you critically hit with a weapon, you regain 5% of your maximum health. And we will have 1500 plus health with this build. So you'll be gaining a ton of health back. Um, especially when you're using your one-handed weapon um, to get your health regen. Moving on, in the Barbarian Tree, you want to pick up Strength, followed by Heavy Handed. Uh, when an enemy stun bar is increased by an, uh, an enemy stun bar is increased by an additional 20% when attacking into their block, this is good for the slow, uh, uh, heavy shielded enemies. Um, you can uh, stun lock them more easily and break their break their uh, blocks. Pick up Strength, pick up Constitution, followed by Relentless. Dealing critical damage with two-handed weapons increases your critical chance by another 10% on the next hit. So you'll do more critical damage with two-handed weapons. Doesn't work with one-handed, but we will primarily be using our hammer. So that's good to pick up there. I would not waste the three points in Breach. Um, the higher level 30 uh, enemies, you typically don't break blocks. Their resistances are too high. And the few that you do, you usually kill within two or three hits anyway. So it's not worth it. You can put those points in better places. Um, next pick up the quick point in constitution followed by heavy specialization this basically gives you approximately a 12 to 15 percent uh increase to your swing time on hammers this also does work with axes even though the tool tip only says hammers i did test it out with the deep root axe and you do get the same speed buff um, with that so uh, don't be afraid that it's only for one type of weapon uh, moving on pick up barbarian 
This will give you one strength of flame or one strength for every two levels of flame, much like with the thick skin. So this is also bugged. You're only getting a maximum of two, but once it's fixed, you should be getting three, which would bring our strength to 17. Um, then moving on, you finally want to pick up blood rage. When an enemy is killed within 10 meters with a melee weapon, the damage done with melee weapons is increased by an additional 20% for 10 seconds. This is a key perk because when you go into fights with multiple enemies, what I recommend doing is going after the weakest, easiest to kill enemy first, because then it will snowball. The second you kill that first one, that will proc the blood rage and give you an extra 20% damage against all the rest of the um, harder to kill enemies. Um, so why waste the time trying to go after the hard one with 20% less damage the entire time? Um, so that is the tactic when you're in fights. Uh, strategy wise to activate that one always go for the weakest enemy first to proc this once it's proc you should be able to chain it until the next one dies and just keep it up moving on in the athlete tree i like to pick up point and strength followed by jump attack this will be your go-to ability if you're using your two-handed hammer because um, it does big damage uh, aoe damage to multiple enemies at the same time and you can actually dodge certain attacks with it um, but to make that more easy you're obviously going to want to pick up double jump as well not to just combo with the jump attack, but to also navigate the map more easily and get uh, out of dodge in a risky situation. You might have to like jump on a ledge to get out of melee range of, in close quarters combat. So always take double jump, followed by strength, and then vigorous deflection. This isn't that good. You do have to kind of work on learning to parry more properly. If you can get those off, uh, a successful parry will give you 30 stamina, but we're mainly just taking that to pick up the three points in... Um, the two points of constitution and the extra strength at the end because those help out a lot and they're just really really cheap so pick that up just for the end last but not least we want something to make our bow a little bit more efficient for those flyers so pick up the point in dexterity followed by marksman this will give you 10 percent additional ranged weapon damage followed by sharpshooter to make it 30 um, next pick up skill shot to make any damage to the head of an enemy with a bow increase by an additional 20 percent and then lastly, multi-shot um, for a 20% chance to spawn multiple arrows at once. This will be good for AOE damage if you have multiple flyers, or if you're up close to an enemy, um, you can actually hit them with multiple shots at once and kill them faster. And then Ranger, which gives you plus two endurance, dexterity, plus five stamina recharge, critical chance, and critical damage. And this does work with your melee as well. So... Don't worry, it wasn't all a loss going all the way to the end of the tree. This perk will help our melee side of things a little bit as well. So good to go to the end there. You unfortunately don't get updraft, updraft for this build. If you wanted to, if you're in the medium part of the game and it's, you're blowing through things pretty easily and you feel like you don't need all of these little one-pointers, you could technically probably get rid of one or two abilities here and there and maybe pick that up if you really wanted to. Um, but it's not 100% necessary. If you've got your altars in the right place and you're using the shrines properly, you should be able to get to 95% of the areas without any issue just by gliding without the updraft. Um, but it is convenient, I know. But warriors are hurting right now. We need every point that we can get. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much the build. I guess the next thing we can do is pop our consumables and go in and demonstrate some combat. So let's teleport to my go-to area and see what we can do. Check in with you in a second. All right, so real quick, one thing I completely forgot about that I wanted to actually show off is our attributes after we pop all of these consumables before we jump into the battle. Um, so let me go ahead and pop those now, just to give you an idea of where we sit on stats. Go to our skill tree here. With all food buffs right now, we are sitting at 24 constitution, which should be 25 if the uh, thick skin perk was working and 20 strength, which should be 21 strength if our um, uh, Blood Rage perk or whatever uh, was working on the other tree with the altars as well. We're sitting at 1,680 health, so a ton of health, and 364 uh, stamina, which is plenty with our Rested buff and the Hawk Boots. We have more than enough stamina. We have plus 110 melee damage, um, plus 40% range damage, the critical damage and the critical chance you can't really go by in this tree. It's not calculating properly. It says 67%. That's probably closer to 70, 75% when we have our whip, our, our weapon out. Um, and then critical chance is way off. This says uh, base 10%, but we get 25 critical hit chance just from the Radiant Sword 
as is. Um, so that would be 35 with that sword base just from the weapon. We get 15 from our helmet, so that would make it 45. So we're probably closer to 50 plus chance of critical hits um, with our sword and probably 35 to 40 with our hammer. So I wouldn't really go off these, but 110 melee damage, almost 1700 health. If I swapped a couple things around, we could probably get even higher. Um, and then 20 strength and 24 constitution. So really, really beefy. And I think we're making the best use of all of our resistances and all of our armor as possible. But without any further ado, let's teleport over and try and see if we can survive the onslaught of the go-to testing arena. You will notice that as a melee user, you're going to have to go out about these fights a little bit differently. Um, I will pretty much be guaranteed dead if I just ran in like I would with a mage and try and mow everything down because uh, your weakness um, with this build is going to be magic damage and we have no poison resistance. So the spray damage from the big chonky guy in the alleyway can one hit you. And if you get bombarded by like two or three of those uh, dual wielding poison brutes um, with the blades, um, they can be really annoying as well. So I'm going to try and kite around and uh, take out the ranged um, nuisance enemies and maybe get one or two of the dual-handed blade guys down first, at least for this top area, and uh, be a little bit more cautious about it. But it's still doable, as you will see. So the first wielded guy, I can actually, it'll be better this way because I can show off how to properly parry against these guys. So you want to block. That's alright. So you can get one swing, immediately parry. You get one swing in between. Come on. So you kind of saw it there. That was a really bad example. I did terrible there. Might actually just pop this. So I don't have to worry about it. I let him hit me way too many times. But um, what you want to do, ideally with those guys, I'm, I'm feeling rusty right now because I've been dealing with mage so long is you get, uh, once their main sw like flurry attack goes, swing one time with a hammer and then immediately block because their next incoming attack is so fast that you'll just instantly parry if you block right away. If you try and get a second swing in, they're going to go right through your attack. Um, that's the biggest downside, in my opinion, with warriors right now is we don't have any invulnerability frames or super armor with our heavy attacks. Um, we should be able to swing through... Uh, uh, enemy attacks um, with warrior builds, in my opinion, um, your s attacks get interrupted way too much, and they're already weak as it is. So, super armor is something I really need to add to this game. But we took him out. I think we can take um, one of the range guys out over here pretty quick. And you do a ton of damage. Like we just two shot that guy. There's a couple more over here that we can take out. like hiding these guys up to this top floor. Usually hide out over here. You can also do the jump attack. That's really good against group of enemies. Um, switch to our blade and just see how much regen we get with our blade. Um, if you don't have the time to use a bandage or um, want to waste a potion, um, speaking of potions, I didn't pop these for stamina and uh, our damage multiplier. So we got that. So all of our buffs are up now. Got another guy up here. Let's see how our one-handed weapon works on this. 84, 84, 84, 84. Our crit chance is so high with this weapon that you're pretty much regaining health, almost 100 health with every single swing. So it's super nice. That was a bad idea. You get one shot by that. Let me fight some of these guys around. You want to take your time with these flurry guys. But see, once you, once you know their move set, you do have to be a little more cautious and kind of learn your enemies a little bit um, with a warrior. You don't have the 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 leeway like you do with a mage to mess around like that. One shot hammer. So I mean you can see with our fully maxed out hammer you do a ton of damage and now we just killed that wolf. You do not want to get hit by these poisons. That will one shot you. 
This guy is probably your worst nightmare. Um, he always does a double throw of that poison, so as soon as he reaches into his pocket, you know immediately to just instantly roll out of the way. Oh, he's already dead. See? So you can kill him pretty quick. You just gotta make sure you don't get hit by that attack. That is, those dual-bladed, like, poison blade guys, and then those toxic spitting uh, brutes are probably for a warrior the worst enemies to face in the game. So you want to be a lot more tactical when you're going up against those ones. But any of the other guys, it doesn't matter how big the pack is, you're so beefy and you have so much health regen that you can get away with just swinging, honestly, and just doing bombarding attacks. Let's see if we can do a little... Little parry. Little parry. See, like, your health regen is so high that you can just heal through all the crazy damage that these guys do. They, like, we barely lost anything because we were regenning so much against those guys. Let me pull a big mob here. Do some... Where is everybody? I feel like there should be a lot more. Come out and play. It. Let me try and parry with the, again with the hammer. There's one, one swing, block, one swing, block, one swing, block, one swing, block, one swing. So that's how you do it with the hammer. That's the trick to beating these guys. You only have time to swing once. But once you learn it, and you take the time to, to learn the tactics of parrying and things like that, the, the warriors do become viable. There's tricks to beating every enemy. You're just not used to learning them because you've been uh, spoiled with the uh, wizard spells so much. But if you take the time to learn the movesets of the enemies and learn the timings, it is possible to make pretty much every fight manageable. Um, and anything other, in my opinion, than those blade guys and the uh, one-hitting toxic spitters, um, anything else you can pretty much demolish with this build. Um, I might cut right now in a second. I'm trying to think of another area that might be good to test this out. That isn't necessarily those guys. Um, I know one of the shroud areas had a um, bunch of enemies. Back to the damage. Where is he? There he is. Look at that. Our life leech just gave us 1200 health. a good demonstration of the dodge ability there. Dodge out of the way. Want to get some health back. Just quickly dodge out. Another trick, if you don't have any consumables left in a, in a life or death situation, you can actually regen health on anything that's destructible, and it's actually faster than an enemy. So just go attack a, a block, a block or a wall or something like that, and you can regenerate your health that way. So that's another little pro tip. But yeah, super viable. As you can see, we took out, in my opinion, the two hardest packs in the game for physical damage um, with the warrior build and had no problem surviving. So really good uh, warrior build. Um, if I make another one, in my opinion, it's probably not going to be a full physical damage only one. I'll probably make it like a paladin and test out some magic use in between. Um, so that'll be the other only variation. But I think with this current setup that we have, um, this is the best possible combination that you can make. The only other thing that I would like to see that I don't have now, I may take a point away from multi-shot and one other place is to uh, unlock Feast. That will increase health by from meat by an additional 15%, which will get us above 1,500, closer to 1,600 health um, for our character. Um, we're sitting at, like I was saying, oh no, it'll be closer to 1,700 health. I haven't seen over 1,700 yet, but if we had Feast, I'm pretty sure it would be over 1,700. I'm curious as to what it would be, but that would be the other perk that I'd potentially take. Um, but yeah, that is the build, you guys. If you enjoyed it, 
found it informative, you think it might be fun to change things up every once in a while and challenge yourself maybe, because um, the game's super easy otherwise, um, then feel free to check it out. I will also, in the description, be adding a link to the image of my skill tree build. I, for those of you that don't know, I made a basically skill tree template in my previous video, a tool used for creators and other people in the community that wanted to share their builds more easily because right now in the skill tree, we can't zoom out. So I photoshopped and edited the entire skill tree so you can see it all at once. Um, so I'll attach that in the uh, description as well. So if you don't wanna watch my entire lengthy description, you can just look at the build guide and copy the nodes that are activated in there and it'll be a little bit quicker um, but yeah that's pretty much it you guys for now um, until the next one hope everyone has a great day and we will see you all later